Hi everybody, Richard Tubb here with episode number two of Tub Talk. And this time around, I'm actually in Miami in Florida in the US for the Autotask Community Live Conference. We've got about 900 IT solution providers, managed service providers, vendors and industry experts all together under one roof for Autotask's annual conference. And the mood here is uh, one of excitement. Two big announcements made by Mark Catini, Autotask CEO, during the uh, opening keynote for the conference. The first was that Autotask have actually been acquired by a private equity firm by the name of Vista Equity Partners. Um, CEO Mark Catini announced that deal at the start of his keynote address. Um, as for what that means for Autotask, in a nutshell, I think it will mean more money for uh, investing into expansion of the product and out of the business. Of course, a lot of uncertainty goes around that uh, announcement as well. I think probably the best way to look at it for, for Autotask partners is to wait and see what happens there. The other part of uh, Marketini's announcement was around the Autotask user interface upgrade. So the new UI was unveiled, I think, to pretty unanimous um, uh, support from uh, Autotask clients and onlookers. Uh, it's fair to say that the uh, the existing Autotask UI and probably that of PSA, professional service automation tools in general, looking a little bit dated. The Autotask UI looked a little bit Windows XP. Um, so there was a, a round of applause uh, for lots of the new features that were being shown by uh, product manager uh, Patrick Byrne during his um, presentation there. Um, so that's that's really a good feature. That's something good that's coming up. And the timescale for that, for the new UI for Autotask, is around October time. We'll see how that goes. As for the conference itself, of course, Autotask, not the only vendors here. Um, there was dozens of vendors uh, displaying their wares for uh, IT solution providers and MSPs. And so for this podcast, I thought I'd share conversations I had with just three of those vendors who I thought not only had the coolest tools in the show, but tools that can make the most impact uh, for IT business owners. Um, I spoke with Desk Director out of Australia. I spoke with Brightgage out of Florida, and I also spoke with OpenDNS, who are in both the US and the UK. I really hope you enjoy the conversations. I hope you find them valuable for your IT business, and I'd also encourage you to reach out to those vendors. In each of the uh, conversations I have, I get them to share who they are and where they're from, uh, so you should find reaching out to them quite easily. I hope you enjoy our conversations. I'm here with Phil Claxon, the co-founder of Desk Director. How are you doing, Phil? Very good, thank you. Very good. Yours. Pleased to be talking to you. Oh, you're welcome. What do Desk Director do and how do they help IT businesses? Well, Desk Director is a client experience platform. And really what that is, is a client portal. So a portal for your clients to use to be able to view and access tickets. Really, it's been designed as a way to help you differentiate yourself in the marketplace by making it very easy to communicate with clients and deliver uh, services that they value make it very easy to, to work with you but also we have a uh, staff heads up display which is a similar sort of concept but it's about bringing all of the information your team together uh, into one place so that uh, where they can effectively work uh, while they're working a, a ticket say uh, they can access other information at the time speed up that process and the two work harmoniously allowing things like presence so your uh, team while they're maybe working a ticket would know whether the client sat at their desk at the moment, which obviously has benefits of knowing, uh, particularly if that ticket requires them to uh, work with them, give them a call, whatever, that's going to be very handy to know that they're naturally sat at their desk. But yeah, predominantly and uh, squarely around the client experience, that's a big place for us. Um, we think not enough service providers focus on improving the client experience very, very operationally focused, and that's a big trend we're seeing. And I'd agree with you, but so the clients that you've got using Desk Director at the moment, what type of MSPs or what type of IT uh, solution providers are they? Well, they're predominantly what you would call uh, MSPs, uh, and they range really anywhere from uh, one to two man uh, shops, if you like, uh, right the way up to our largest, it's about 250 uh, staff. Uh, so really the whole gamut of, of uh, what you would call MSPs though. So traditional MSPs, they're providing uh, outsourced IT service to their clients and using Desk Director as a way to, to uh, differentiate that, make it easier for their clients to work with them. And the feedback you're, you're getting from MSPs that have implemented Desk Director, what impact does it have on their business and their relationship with the clients? Sure, it, it, absolutely. The feedback really is, is in line with what we were hoping. Um, and I suppose it's worth mentioning that uh, we are an MSP as well. It's born out of a need. 
Uh, so developed Destroy for our own purposes and, and have uh, taken it to market. So the feedbacks around, uh, from their clients at least, is that it's something that they kind of have been hoping for for a while. Uh, they're also seeing that it's just a, a, a nice, elegant way for them to be able to communicate and work with the MSP and deliver a lot more, I guess, a lot more value is what they're seeing from that. So uh, a lot of our partners will use it in... Um, new business work as well. In fact, actually, that's one of the, the big growth areas that they'll use it while they're out talking to prospective clients uh, and present this as a way that they're a little different, uh, something that you will get as a byproduct of working with them as a provider and something that they can use to better communicate with them but also provide them training and learning and that sort of thing, which is a different kind of conversation than we, we traditionally see. So you'd say, you know, Desk Director gives uh, MSPs a competitive advantage, I guess, over... Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that was a, a, a big part of our decision internally when we originally wanted to create uh, Desk Director for our own purposes was about that. We kind of sat back and analysed what we were doing and um, very critically realised that we didn't really present all that different to a lot of other providers in our marketplace. And we exactly make it very easy for our clients to decide on which provider they would go with. Um, and ultimately our clients are getting uh, more savvy as time goes on, but they still don't always understand what an IT service provider does for them. And so we, we as an MSP present often this flat fee, this fixed fee to manage their IT environment, but they don't, we don't always understand what value they get from it. So we were looking for something they could see, touch and feel. It's quantifiable value that they would get. And so that's where it comes from. And to that point, what does it, uh, the tool practically, what does it look like for an MSP to deploy this and how do end users, what do they see? Sure. So the uh, product is, a, is an application that they deploy. So we have, that brings itself some benefits, but it deploys using the RMM products they have. So an MSP would uh, brand it for a start and then deploy it out to their clients using RMMs like Continuum and LabTech and Kaseya and the like. Uh, and so then it would appear on the client's machine, uh, runs in the system tray, uh, but it appears branded, as I say. So the important thing is we want to make a tool that they can present as theirs. Uh, and so then when the client wants to access tickets, tra- uh, training material, quotes, all those sorts of things that we deliver, they can just simply go to the tray or fire up a, a easy-to-use application that's sat on their machine. Uh, and we have integration with Active Directory, so we the big drive for us also was to make it much easier for them to get into it to help you drive adoption. The important things make it easy for the client to use. So that they'll deploy it that way. It's a very simple to install um, and can be deployed on mass very fast. Similar thing on the um, MSP side, they are heads-up display as an application as well. So we purposely built as an application because as an application we are a lot more aware of what we call context and so we can make the uh, MSP aware of things like the machine the person sat at, which a web page which is never going to be able to do, and equally we can integrate with Active Directory, which a, a web page again can't easily do either. Yeah. So there's been a lot of announcements from uh, vendors recently, a lot of interesting news going on in the MSP market. Mm. What's new at Desk Director? So the, the, the newest thing at Desk Director for us, we've, uh, we're excited, we've built an integration with um, an online form provider. Uh, called Wufu, and what that means for our MSP clients is that they can now present their clients' forms. Um, and what, what that really means is that a uh, common challenge, and we were hearing a lot from our partners, was that uh, it was great that the clients were much easier, could much easier the, uh, log tickets. The, the challenge was they often uh, were, they had things like new user requests, they had change requests, um, and often the the information they got back from the client wasn't enough for them to effectively solve the problem or effectively make the change. Uh, so now with forms, it means that you can present a client a form for them to populate, very easy for them to work through, and you as the service provider can collect all the information uh, that you need to effectively solve the problem. So really decreasing that back and forth that often happened. Um, and we're seeing our partners use it for those purposes, but other ways to really innovate in their service delivery They'll use it for things like onboarding. So a new client comes on board, they can need to collect pieces of information from them during their onboarding process. A form is a perfect way to do it, and by delivering it through Desk Director, that's a 
super easy thing for them to do. Um, and we're, we're iterating in the area of our learning centre and making it easy to integrate with other products. That's probably some of the key areas we've, have changed for us recently um, and kind of pretty active roadmap into the next six to, uh, six to 12 months, particularly driven around things like uh, mobile, Mac, um, areas that a lot of things that are coming back from feedback from our partners that they'd love to see in the product. You mentioned some integrations earlier on with RMM tools and Active Directory. Yeah. Um, which uh, PSA tools you integrate with? Well, currently we actually we're actually excited now to announce that we are now integrate with Autotask. Previously, we were ConnectWise only, so very happy to be in the Autotask community now. Um, and uh, so it's ConnectWise and Autotask for the moment, at least. Um, with a desire going forward, we'll look at others, but um, very very happy to be focused on those two communities. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time today, Phil. Really appreciate it. If anybody listening to this wants to reach out to Desk Director or to you personally, yeah. how do they go about that? Well, certainly uh, website's a key place to go, deskdirector.com. Um, welcome to uh, email me individually as well. So I'm phil at deskdirector.com, that is. So I'm more than happy to take emails from them, very happy to uh, share information around Desk Director and um, happy to get on a call or do a demonstration if they want to know more. Wonderful. Phil, thanks for your yeah. time. Pleasure. Thank you. So, I'm here with uh, Dima Kumat. You are the Senior Product Manager at OpenDNS. Uh, what do OpenDNS do and how do they help IT companies? Uh, great talking to you, Richard. And um, OpenDNS is a cloud security provider. What that means is that we really rely on big data threat intelligence, looking at the internet as a whole. And for managed service providers, we're able to provide an additional layer of protection to catch all the zero-day threats, all the emerging threats, and all the other things that really you can't get with signature-based protection, such as antivirus and firewall. So we're really the, the guys trying to predict the threats and block them before they become a problem. Cool. And what does that look like in practice for an IT company? How do they utilize OpenDNS to help keep their clients safe? Excellent question. Um, in terms of, of, of a practitioner, really we focused on user experience and making it seamless and easy. Um, the deployment is as simple as pointing DNS to us and giving us the public IP or deploying an agent. And from that point, it's very simple controls. So um, our standard security policy is the one that's typically in use. So block drive by downloads, advanced threats, botnets, all of those things. Um, and really then um, manage the customization of the service, such as making the block page relevant to your users, putting your logo up, making sure that the end user understands that this isn't just something random on the web, but this is their IT provider saying, whoa, 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 you've just gone to a bad side of the Internet, and I'm protecting you. This is, this is for your own good, and here's how you tell me if you, if you want to challenge that. But I'm working with you as opposed to against you. Got it. What type of impact does uh, your service have for MSPs who are looking to increase their recurring revenue? I mean, mm -hmm. is this a service that they sell to clients, or is it just there for them to reduce the cost of their support? Um, you know, it varies. It really does. What I've seen from our top performing partners is they basically include the security aspect of the service to reduce their ongoing cost and looking at the service boards and the hours logged by our partners, we see 50 to 80% drop off, sometimes 90% drop off in terms of the amount of hours they spend remediating. Uh, whether it's reformatting or trying to restore systems from backup, um, or simply hunting down that piece of malware that keeps popping up. The way that they can make money is um, we, our service is very simple in terms of licensing. We include everything for our partners. So they can add on granular web filtering. And by granular, I mean the CEO gets to go wherever they want and the rank and file are, are restricted. Um, or what's becoming more common in this day is um, a co-branded reporting dashboard that they can expose to their end customers so they can monitor what employees are doing without actually doing filtering. And the power of that is, well, everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket with a 4G connection. Um, you want to make sure your employees are productive by management as opposed to trying to solve everything through technology. Got it, got it. 
So we're here in beautiful Miami at Autotask <laughs> Community Live. It's very hot for a Brit like me <laughs> at the moment, but there's lots of vendor announcements going on at mm-hmm. the conference. So what's new at OpenDNS? Well, I'm very excited to announce our Autotask integration at this conference, and what better place to do it, right? Um, the I'm the product manager, which means I talk to our partners constantly. I'm looking for how do we make their experience with our product better. And the thing they've always said to me is, I want tickets within my PSA. I don't want to have to look in your system for alerts. So earlier I mentioned prevention and containment. If we've just done our job and prevented an infection from taking place, we'll log that and install product in Autotask now so you can talk to customers and show value. On the other hand, if we're containing something, so say if CryptoLocker comes in via an email or some other way, and we're, we're containing it so it can't get the encryption key, but the IT professional, the service provider starts to do something, we'll create the ticket. And what's elegant about this is rather than bombarding them with alerts, we'll just continue to update the ticket if the infection persists or if they continue to need to get additional data. Well, thanks for your time today, Dima. I appreciate it. If anybody listening wants to find out more about OpenDNS or get in touch with you, how would they go about that? Uh, thank you so much, Richard. If, if you want to find out more, go on OpenDNS.com um, or feel free to email me, D-I-M-A, D-I-M-A at OpenDNS.com. Wonderful, Dima. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Richard. I'm here with Eric Dosel, who is the CEO and co-founder for BrightGage. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing very well. Happy to be here. Oh, you're welcome. So, um, for those of uh, those listeners who don't know what BrightGage do, um, who are BrightGage and how do they help IT businesses? So, BrightGage is a business intelligence platform, and we cater 100% to the managed service and IT service market. And so, we help our customers visualize their data, bringing it in from different data sources that a typical IT service provider uses, and just make sense of their data so that they can make better business decisions a lot faster. And what does the tool look like in practice? Uh, how is it deployed? Uh, what does it integrate with? So there's a couple key areas that we uh, we like to talk to our customers about. Number one is being able to pull in your data, which a lot of our customers have a struggle with. The data is in different silos. How do I bring it into one location? Then to be able to customize it, and then to be able to consume it. And the entire process is all web-based, so we're a hosted solution. We pull in your data, and it gives you the ability to really customize how you want to see it. And then you can consume it, whether it's in a report or if you want to consume it in a dashboard. To us, it doesn't matter. It's your data, however you want to do it. And so where would the data be pulled from? RMM tools, PSA tools? What what other types of areas? Right now, our focus is on RMM and PSA tools. Uh, Later on this year, we'll be announcing into uh, integrations of financial packages. Uh, In August of 2014, we're actually going to do a release for any SQL database. You can pull in that data. So we're really just opening up. Uh, so that you can pull in whatever you want to see, however you want to see it, uh, whenever you want. Now, I've seen a lot of the dashboards. They're not static dashboards, are they? Um, a lot of them you can click on and drill into things. Yeah, so dashboards is really hot right now. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about them. Every, all the vendors are deploying them. And it's we see it as a great, for us, from a awareness uh, building. And so the dashboards, ours, allow you to bring multiple data sources, but then you can put them up on a TV screen. They refresh pretty rapidly. So you get a lot more flexibility and customize uh, customability, and again, you pull it into one location. So it's not just an in-app view; it's all your uh, data, and then you can see it on whatever device you want. So give me some examples of some of the um, some of the data that uh, that BrightGage customers display on their dashboards. So the majority of the customers we work with are all around service-related metrics. How can they improve their efficiency? I mean, if at the end of the day, if you look at your PNL, the the largest cost is associated with your people. So how do I make them more efficient? So typical information they're looking for is, is my team billable or not? And what percentage is that? And how can I improve that? Uh, The tickets that my customers are bringing in, like they talked about at Comlife today about the customer experience being very important. Are we responding fast enough? How are we doing with our customer satisfaction surveys? Those tend to be the highest on the PSA side. On the RMM, it's really just the monitoring any servers down, uh, when was the last time the server was down, patch management, those high-level things that could potentially cause an issue for your uh, customers, and then that just requires you to spend more time servicing them versus you know, keeping it more simple. 
And what does a typical uh, bright gauge client look like in terms of an MSP? Because my gut feeling is that it's only MSPs of a certain outlook who start to actually drill into figures and manage um, based on metrics. So the typical MSP that we work with, uh, I would say the makeup is you know ten employees on the low end, and it'll go up to you know several hundred employees. But what we're finding is the smaller MSPs, the single digits, you know, three, four, five employees, they're saying, hey, we're running around kind of with a chicken with a head cut off. I've either read something that I need to start looking at my data, I've started to put together regular P&Ls and I'm trying to improve things. So we're starting to get more interest and we've put together packages for those companies to try to help them so that it's not just, hey, it's too expensive, I'll get to you when I, you know, get to a certain size. Uh, and the majority of the folks we deal with tend to be service related uh, or owners and a lot of owners for a typical MSP owner is a technical person so they like the fact that they can get customized with their data but the biggest bang again is really around the service metrics we've released uh, about three months ago sales metrics and those are taking a little bit longer to kind of get adopted because the sales team isn't used to using those techie tools and the owners are more technical focused so they want service operations uh, but we're starting to see some traction in that area as well. And what does implementation of Bright Gauge look like? Because obviously it's very, very powerful, but most of us, myself included, when we look at dashboards with figures, it's like, okay, this looks pretty, but I haven't got the fuckiest where to start. So what does an implementation look like? <laughs> so implementation is actually quite easy, and that's one of our kind of differentiators from some of the larger players. Uh, what it basically takes is if you're we're connected to a hosted solution, it's put in the API credentials. If you're on on-premise, it's load an agent that reads the data that we need. Everything communicates to our data center. We crunch the numbers for you and we publish them out to you. The nice thing is, is we give you kind of a jump start with about 10 to 15 uh, template reports and about 50 to 70, depending on the integration, uh, gauges, which are those visuals that you look at, so that you can kind of get started with them, use our templates, or you can just clone, tweak the, the ones you want. We also have a team that's dedicated to implementations, and that gives them the opportunity to really help our customers. Cool. Now, we're in beautiful Miami at the moment. It's very hot for a Brit like me. Um, there's been lots of announcements from vendors over the last couple of days at Autotask Community Live. What's new in the Bright Gauge world? So what's new in Bright Gauge is really um, specifically around the Autotask and Comlab world is we released a bunch of new Autotask gauges and visuals, uh, several of them around Autotask sales, so people that are looking to, hey, what is my pipeline? I want to start planning resources, those type of things. We were also talking with a lot of our customers in our community because we were just a couple of weeks away from our next release, which is our 4.0, which will include that's being able to connect to any SQL agent, being, uh, any SQL database, being able to do you know CSV or Excel uploads, and so that's really been the kind of the focus that we've been talking to our partners. The other thing about our next release is that we're introducing a lot of advanced, the ability to do advanced calculations and layering. So if you wanted to see I want to see utilization or I want to see you know company and revenue as well as tickets together. You can very easily do that when we with our next release. And for those listeners who don't know who Eric Dosel is, what's your background and what was the motivation for building Bright Gauge in the first place? So uh, I used to, uh, I started an MSP out of our family business in 2004 uh, with, along with my brother who is my co-founder at Bright Gauge and we ran that up until 2012. Uh, which when we sold the company to uh, Konica Minolta. But in 2010, what we were finding is we couldn't do reporting for our customers. So BrightGauge started to solve our own internal. It's kind of scratching our own itch. We had data and silos. We needed to report to the customers. Everyone who's listening to this probably has dealt with it. I got PDFs. I got Excel files. How do I put it together and make it pretty? So we built the software for ourselves internally to just integrate with two softwares and be able to send out the report to customers. That we showed to our peer group. They liked it, we commercialized it, and from there kind of launched it. So we've been in the MSP industry since 2004. My father started a technology company in 1980, so technology is kind of in our blood, and, and we love this, this industry. Fantastic. Well, look, thanks for your time today, Eric. If anybody listening wants to get in touch with you or find out more about Bright Gauge, where would they go? Best place is to go to the website, uh, brightgauge.com, or you can always email me, which my email is my first initial and last name, at brightgauge.com. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Eric. Thank you. Thanks for joining me again on another Tup Talk. And if you enjoyed this episode, perhaps you could do me a favor and share it with your peers and colleagues, anyone you think would get value from it. 
And don't forget, you can find me at www.tublog.co.uk, on Twitter at Tublog, and on Google+. If you've got any feedback on the podcast or anyone you particularly like to hear from in the MSP community, just let me know.